Hey everybody, it's Jim or JB882 as you probably know me on the TW forum. Uh, here in the garage, got my 06 TW200 on the lift and I'm about to do a little upgrade to it. Um, got a box in the mail from Bradley Performance and um, wanted to show you what this, what's in the box and uh, also go through the actual install of it and at least give my initial thoughts on the product itself and uh, the install and what I think of it. And then um, I'll do another video at some point um, when I actually have a chance to go out and ride it and uh, get a feel for it. So it is winter. It's February. I live in New England. It's like 30 degrees out right now. So riding is just not happening. But um, without further ado, let's get into this. Let me uh, get this box correct. All right, folks, here it is. This is a box I got uh, from Brad Bradley Performance. I actually got two boxes, the exact same size, but uh, figured I'd um, cut into one of these and show you what's in it. Start opening these up as well. So if anybody's been following the TW200 forum, you'll recognize exactly what this is right off the bat. This is Bradley's rear disc upgrade kit to go from a drum to a disc and um, I bought two of them bought one for each bike and I'm actually going to go through the first install today and kind of document it for everybody now before I get too deep into this this is not a you know instructional how to install video this is more of going to be a show you how I did it and um Kind of the basics of what's involved um you know if you have uh, a high degree of mechanical kind of know-how and are confident in your skills this probably won't be too hard of an install for you if uh if you don't and are not comfortable with working on motorcycles i would seek a professional for this Okay, so this looks like a uh, like a pretty complete kit. Um, as you can see, we've got the disc here, an adapter to adapt where the drum used to be to fit the disc, master cylinder, hose, caliper, it's a twin piston caliper, some spacers, Loctite, a zip tie, and then uh, this guy right here that's a um, an adapter to fit the brake pedal to the master here. So it, it's got everything you need to do this conversion. It's, um, so far, I'm pretty impressed with it. It uh, seems to be really well thought out. Now, we'll see how the install goes, but um, so far, I, uh, I like what I see here. Now, probably should answer why I want to put a rear disc on these bikes. Um, I personally hate the drum rear brake. I just despise it. Um, you know, it doesn't have a lot of power which um, I think everybody knows about. Even when it's adjusted well, it doesn't have a lot of power, but worse yet, it doesn't have a lot of, uh, a lot of feel to it. Like on my bike, um, I feel like there's one of two modes. Either I got the rear wheel locked up or it's off. Uh, there's really nothing in between. You know, when I'm trying to trail brake and things like that, it just doesn't, it doesn't modulate well. And um, a disc should certainly fit, you know, fix that which is why I'm so excited to put these on the bike. So um, I'm gonna cut to uh, over to the bike here and 
show you what's involved in the install. Um, I've watched Bradley's video and seems pretty simple. Um, I think the worst part of the whole thing will be getting the master put on. The rear looks extremely simple. The master, uh, you do have to drill a hole. There is a little bit more to it, but I don't think it's going to be too big a deal to do. So I'm going to cut over to the bike now and start taking it apart and getting ready to put this on. All right, so as you can see, I already have my TW up on the lift. Um, step number one is going to be to remove this rear tire. Next step, I need to remove the old, the old brake run. Next step, I need to remove the drum. Um, that requires a 13 millimeter. Um, no real good way to get a socket on it. Yeah, I don't have a set of like wobbler driveline sockets or anything like that. So I have to get them from inside of here and uh, kind of like this. It's going to be a little bit painful. Try a different, uh, different wrench maybe. Okay, here's that. It's off. All right, next step is to install the uh, the disc adapter. I did add a little bit of the Loctite to these threads on the uh, these provided bolts. All right, next step is to install the uh, the disc adapter. I did add a little bit of the Loctite to these threads on the uh, these provided bolts. Okay, and um, now I need to tighten them. Now, he did not provide a torque spec for these, so I'm going to go with the Yamaha factory spec for the drum, um, which is 20 foot pounds. On each of these bolts, I need to uh, stand this up so I can get at it at the rear. Alright, so the adapter's on. Now, uh, next up is to put the disc on. And before I do, I'm going to hit it with a little bit of this uh, on the disc just to make sure there's no oils and stuff on there. Okay. And I'm going to hit these bolts too with a little bit of Loctite so I don't want them coming off. Just like those other bolts, I'm going to torque these as well to, uh, to 20. Okay, next up is going to be fitting the tire and wheel back on the bike with the uh, caliper. So the caliper two spacers that go along with it, a short one and a long one. I'm just going to roll this wheel up into place. Yeah. 
master cylinder out of the way here. do is I'm going to start, I'm going to lift it up in, uh, on the left side of the bike and start to get the axle pushed through. Right. It looks like the short spacer needs to go up in here. adjusters here and the washer and the nut. I know exactly where I had these set initially so I'm just going to put them right back in the same location. spins nice and free. So that's it for the rear. Um, now I got to concentrate on getting the uh, master cylinder on and getting it attached uh, to the brake pedal. So job number one is going to be to get this up and through this area underneath the muffler to get the master out. But it sits somewhere around this area here. Um, this nut spacer can come off. Now he provides this little guy here. This is for this top bolt here on the uh, master cylinder itself. And it just wraps around the frame and I need to squeeze it. So that I can get this bolt into it uh, along with a little bit of Loctite. So once again a little bit of Loctite. I need some channel locks. Here we go. What I can do is figure out approximately where this needs to live and just kind of put it uh, finger tight here. Next step, I want to install this. This is the adapter that uh, adapts this guy to the actual uh, rear brake. Once again, a little bit of Loctite. All right, 
And up next, I want to uh, take this cotter pin out so I can attach this pin. One of the things I'm going to do, I'm going to adjust this. It's kind of towards the end. I'm going to move this kind of more in the middle so I have a little bit of adjustment up and down. Um, get the master cylinder positioned in a place that I like it so that it'll actually attach. About as far down as should go. There we go. Looks pretty good. in in all right now that this is all together um, the last thing I need to do is I need to drill a hole in here to attach this last bolt which uh, holds this bracket which uh, is going to stabilize the whole master cylinder so I'm going to go get a drill and I'm going to peg a hole through here Okay, here we go. Okay, once again, a little bit of Loctite on the uh, fastener. Slide this spacer in there and the bolt. Not on the back side of it. Okay. Alright, now I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna test this, make sure it all seems to work, and it does. All right, next up I want to tighten everything down. Uh, these two bolts here, these ones here, and then tighten this jam nut. That's it, it's installed. Um, last piece I need to do is tie this uh, this hose up and uh, tie it to the swing arm, which he includes a zip tie for that. Alright, that's it. That's the whole the whole kit installed. Um, not too bad. Now, how does it work? It seems to work well, and I can already tell just by hand that you know I can apply partial brake and it has nice nice progression to it. I I honestly think I'm gonna be very, very happy with this uh, when it's all said and done. It uh, seems to be a very, very well thought out kit and uh, Installation was relatively painless. I honestly think the worst part was getting that old drum off. So I had to, uh, you know, the screws were corroded and uh, took a little bit to get them off. But beyond that, pretty straightforward, pretty easy kit to install. And uh, I think it's going to work out awesome. Hey everyone, I'm going to film a quick addendum to this disc install video here. reason I'm doing this instead of reshooting the entire thing is a couple of reasons. Thing number one, I think there's some things that need to be said about this disc kit in its current configuration and some things that I've learned during the install that everybody needs to know about. 
and also, you know, some changes that I've suggested to Bradley Performance that they need to make to this kit. I also want to talk about some changes that I made to the actual unit itself. And um, I figured as well, you know, the install video is kind of how it's perceived to be installed by anybody. The way that the Bradley Performance video says, do it this way. Well, that's what I did. You know, plus I also did things like looked up the torque values for the bolts and things like that. So let's start with uh, the changes that I have made. Thing number one, I painted the caliper black. I hated the gold, which is me, but I couldn't stand the look of it on my motorcycle. So I painted it black with some caliper paint. The other thing that I did was I rerouted this hose. As if you look back in the video, um, the hose kind of had a bend in it, about 30 degrees, and it came almost straight off the, uh, you know, off the off this way, and it was about three and a half inches, you know, rode above the swing arm about three and a half inches until you connected it down here, where the original drum brake spring hooked onto a swing arm. It looked awful vulnerable to me, and just some discourse back and forth with a couple guys in the TW forum. Um, Ski Pro 3 and I both kind of together came to the conclusion that maybe we, I should try flipping it over, because he, he was of the same opinion as me. He didn't like it at all, and uh, like try flipping it over, and let's see what it does. Well, I did, but that in itself was not going to work because the the angle of this fitting would have put the hose right here and if you bent it a little bit more to get it underneath this piece of the casting where the slide pin goes it would have had a very radical bend in it neither of those would have worked very good so what i ended up doing was i straightened this fitting out almost fully and as you can see now it lays a whole heck of a lot nicer the um I did have to cock the fitting out this way a little bit to clear a bleed screw, but that's no big deal. It's still tucked in inside the bike. It's, you know, nothing's going to catch on it. And it took some of the twist out of it, and it really lays in there nice now. The uh, one thing to note about the bleed screw, just for anybody that's curious, it is kind of towards the bottom. So, yes, you do need to remove the caliper to bleed it. And... Uh, you know, that's not a knock on Bradley performance by any stretch. That's it's not an unprecedented thing. I had a twenty plus thousand dollar Ducati Multistrada 1200 that was the same exact way on the rear, except you couldn't really get the thing off. It was a pain. You'd take the wheel off and everything to get the thing off there. It was uh, this one you will too, but it was significantly worse than this with special tools involved and um, real bad news to bleed the brake on that thing and it needed it at least two, three times a season. So not unprecedented, like I said. Other changes I've made, brake pads themselves. I did not like the pads that came with this. I just didn't feel like they had good initial bite when you pressed the brake. They, uh, they didn't feel very great to me. So I wanted something with centered pads. I ended up getting these ones here are from Rocky Mountain ATV. They're Tusk brand. So I didn't even go super high-end brand. But I um, these ones here are from a 85 to like 87, 88 XR250 front wheel. Um, they fit right in there. The uh, They're identical in every way except for these little kind of tabs that stick up. Let me try to zoom in. You can see this little, uh, I call it the devil horn right here that sticks up but it clears the caliper it doesn't hit anything i have no idea what their function is but that particular pad has those but they fit and they fit beautifully and they work great the other one that will fit this is from a um Hyosung 250 and 650 gt their front pads and i believe the rears are identical to the ones that came in this caliper that were preloaded and you can buy like ebc or galfer um, you know, they have centered brake pad options that are superior to what came in this kit. Um, and I will tell you that these pads here, these Tusk ones, are way worlds better than what came with this kit. 
The other change that I've made is to the orientation of this disc. If you notice, this is the way it should be mounted with the, uh, you know, the bolts go in here. There's, there's the shoulder and then there's a relief in here for the head of the bolt. And when it's mounted this way, I don't know about you, but it looks backwards to me. Like this is the direction of rotation of the motorcycle and it looks backwards. I feel like it should be mounted this way. I've never mounted a, a slotted disc in this orientation. They're always mounted this way. Even if you look at the front of the bike, the orientation of the holes and the way that they're angled is this way. And I will tell you in the few test rides that I did, this was very noisy with it mounted the other way. When it's mounted this way, it's quiet. So just a couple. One is a kind of cosmetic, but kind of uh, not change. This is definitely not cosmetic. It's more of a performance change. This is cosmetic, and this is just personal preference. So other than that, you know, I think the way like the master cylinder mounts and all that kind of stuff, really, really well thought out. It fits the bike great. The master does not seem to interfere with your leg or your boot like I originally thought it might. Um, I haven't seemed to hit it, even if I grip the tank or grip the sides with my knees to, you know, go over bumps and stuff. I don't seem to, it doesn't seem to interfere. So that's great. Now, things I've learned about the install and also as a part of this, we are going to get into the things that uh, I think need to be changed. So this is the disc adapter. And down here, which I'll swing you over, I have a wheel off of a TW. When you put the disc adapter on, the directions say just put the bolts in. So I'm going to put the bolts in and tighten it up. Here's the problem. I don't know if you can see this, but I've got about eh, close to probably three sixteenths of an inch of movement in any direction on this guy. So it's real easy to get this mounted so that it's not centered and the wheel, you know, the wheel will be rotating in a circle, but your disc is rotating in kind of an ellipse. The other part of the problem here is you put this guy on and you have some tolerances on these shoulders and you might get this thing can move around a little bit too. A, a lot less than this adapter can, but it's still, you know, it might move three to five thousandths of an inch in any direction. When you stack the two on top of each other, this not perfectly centered, this not perfectly centered, you can get this disc really, really wonky. And that's what I ran into, just installing it as per kind of the instructions. That is what I ran into. And what happened to me was my first test drive down the street, I was going like 20 miles an hour, and I gave it all it had on the disc brake, and the rear wheel was doing this literally hopping off the ground, uh, completely losing traction. And at 20 miles an hour, it probably took me 100 feet to bring it to a complete stop. Um, but the rear of the bike was extremely upset. I mean, it was violently bouncing off the pavement because this thing was so out of whack. And to me, that's a, that's a problem. Now, why is this... You know, what can be done about this? Well, here's what I suggested to Bradley Performance was they take this adapter and they make this hole smaller. And the reason being, if you look on the drum itself or the, the, uh, the wheel itself, there's a shoulder right here. This shoulder is the exact same size as this hole in the drum. When you put that guy on there, it does not move. You can, you can put this on there. It doesn't move. It self-centers. It stays there. You'd put that, you know, the, the three bolts in there, tighten them, you're done. Um, that's the way I think that this should have been built. The other thing... that I think Bradley Performance needs to do is the same thing for the disc. 
They need to raise some edges up on here to capture this disc so that it is centered and cannot move. Now, what have I done to fix this? Because I have fixed it. Um, I took some measurements. You know, I when I first drove it, I immediately took it home, put it on the balance stand, put a dial indicator on it, and I measured the disc, and I measured the adapter, and found out how far out of whack it was, and it was all over the place. So I knew I needed to do something to center it up. What did I do? I built this guy on my 3D printer. And this fits in the adapter, and it fits tight. I could drop the axle down through the center of it, and then through the bearings and the wheel. Tighten these three bolts down, and then I could take my disc, stick it on. It also stays is nice and centered. Now it's centered to the axle, and I could tighten the disc down. That has, uh, and then pull it out and uh, mount it to the motorcycle. Now, for me, this has, this has helped significantly. It feels like it should. I no longer have the violent wheel hop in the rear with the new pads. It's got lots of power, stops great. I'm very happy with the performance now that I've done this. I have suggested to Bradley Performance that they take a look at making those changes because really for two reasons. Thing number one, it's going to make it a whole heck of a lot easier for somebody to install. And it will actually make the install possible for somebody that doesn't have the capability to build something like this. I mean, this is not a hard tool to build, but if you don't have a 3D printer or a lathe, um, you can't make such a thing. You know, if I still either had, you know, my lathe here in the shop or access to my dad's machine shop when he was alive, you know, we would have just made an adapter and called it a day. Or, or he would have measured this, grabbed the CNC machine, and made a new one. I mean, it, you know, either either way, um, we would have we would have solved this, you know, probably on a permanent basis. We probably would have just made a new adapter. It would have been, and would have been done with it. But uh, I got what I got, and I have the tools that I have, so I was able to make this guy. And so far, it's worked. Now, my concern with what I've done is because. All you're dependent on is the clamping force of these bolts to hold all this in place. Under the force of braking, is this stuff going to move over time? That's my concern. And if it moves over time, that's a, that's a problem. Um, so that's why I suggested to Bradley Performance that you know they make these so that they are locked into place and they're centered to the wheel and they, they just can't move. So that's pretty much... That's pretty much that as far as the lessons learned and the changes I think that need to be made to this. Now, um, what do I think of this disc kit after all of this stuff? Well, you know, now that I've had a chance to put maybe like 50 miles on it, I do like it. Um, it, it really, you know, way outperforms the drum in every way. And I will be putting together a video on my riding impressions of this, but spoiler alert, I like it. Do I recommend it? No. I do not recommend this to everybody. If you have the capability to build some way to do this and don't mind the risk of this not staying centered over time, go for it. If you are average Joe motorcycle wrencher guy that doesn't have access to just a basic set of hand tools. I do not recommend this because I don't think you can, as it sits, I don't think that you'll have a positive experience installing this. It, um, you know, getting it centered without some sort of tool, um, or a dial indicator and a way to rotate the wheel and measure it. And, you know, the skill to, to actually take the painstaking approach that that would be, to getting this thing centered, I just don't. I just don't see it as being a necessarily a viable install for anybody to just do. I, I just don't feel that that it's quite ready for prime time. Um, now, if Bradley fixes these two things and makes this 
an absolute drop in install, then I wouldn't see any reason for anybody to hesitate to buy it if they want one. I just, that's the way I feel about it. So, you know, I, if anybody takes issue with my opinion, you know, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to sugarcoat it. That is just, that's just the way I feel about it. You know, I, um, like I said, I feel like Bradley Performance needs to fix this adapter. Really, that's the big thing. But I also feel like they should replace these for everybody that's already bought one. And the reason I say that is, you know, despite the disclaimer on their website that, you know, do this at your own risk, somebody gets hurt doing this, they're going to sue him. And then he's going to have to defend himself. And lawyers ain't cheap. So, you know... You could fix this quite easily. You know, it's been identified. Um, I feel like it could be easily repaired, and it would make it would make this disc kit absolutely great. You know, as it sits, I think it's still like beta; it's a work in progress, and uh, with a few minor tweaks, this thing could be an absolute game changer for the TW. That's the way I feel about it. Now, all of that said. Notice that I have parts for a second kit, but it's not on a motorcycle. Um, well, why would I have a second kit and not have it on a bike? Well, that's pretty simple. If you've watched my channel, you'll know that we have two TWs. One is mine, and one belongs to my better half. And here's the way I feel about this. Um, and you could take this for what it... Take this at face value, because I'm not going to sugarcoat this either. If I put something like this on my motorcycle, and it fails, and I hurt myself, I hurt myself. Won't be the first time. Sure as hell won't be the last. That I, that I can assure you. But if I take this kit and I put it on her bike, and something bad happens and she hurts herself, I can't live with that. Period. There's a willing, there's a you know a level of risk that I am willing to take for me, but I'm not willing to take that same level of risk for someone whose safety matters more to me than my own, and that's the bottom line. So, you know, I'm not installing this kit on her bike until I know that it's 100% solid, and I won't know that until I get some serious miles on it and see how it feels over time. So. Install on her bike, it could be a year away at this point. It's going to go right back in the box that it came from. And uh, when I feel like the time is right, I'll install it, but I won't do it until I know. And uh, that's pretty much it. So I think that's a wrap. And it, there's nothing more that I could say, you know, other than if you're interested in one of these kits, just buy with caution. You know, know what you're getting yourself into. That, that's all. That's all I ask. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, please let me know um, in the comments below. And uh, once again, I appreciate you watching, and have yourself a great day.